Welcome to Oceanic Oracle. My name is Ari and today you're going to come book window shopping with me. I thought this would be fun because it's the holiday season. New books have come out and things are going on on the book side of the internet. Lots of things have come out on Instagram, lots of things have come out on Goodreads, at least from what I've seen. And I thought why don't I go on a book shopping experience with you? I am going to be recording on my tablet here. I'm going to be doing a like screen, like screen recording. So I'm going to move over this side. So I'm going to stick it up here. Okay, so this is my screen on my tablet. So let us go to Waterstones, which I conveniently have keyed up right here. So Waterstones for me is always a good place to look. Uh, my local bookshop doesn't really have a book catalogue and I like using Waterstones as sort of like a gateway for me to go to book depository and stuff. So looking on here, so I would, I'll scroll down, see what people are talking about. Okay, okay, nothing really interesting. So I'm going to hop into the menu. I'm going to see books, fiction. Uh, let's have a look at fantasy. See what's available online. Uh, so, best fantasy books. Okay. Ooh, Lore of Olympus. Uh, this book is a new sort of, um, well, it's not new. This book was a... It was a web comic, but it's recently been turned into an actual book. This has been inspired by the Hades and Persephone myth. Again, this is just a fun new romance. So that's what that's what the cover looks like. Witness what the gods do after dark in the stylish and contemporary reimagining of mythology's well-known series or stories. Persephone, young goddess of spring, is new to Olympus. Her mother, Demeter, has raised her in the mortal realm, but after Persephone promises to train as a sacred virgin, she's allowed to live in the fast-moving, glamorous world of the gods. When her roommate Artemis takes her to a party, her life changes. She ends up meeting Hades and feels an immediate spark with the charming yet misunderstood ruler of the underworld. I like this concept. This is a book that I would like to read. This is just me generally. I don't find Hades and Persephone really um, a good basis for a romance thing. I know certain, I know it's become really popular. Uh, I know A Deal with the Elf King has become popular. To me, it feels very, like, like this is, this is just my opinion. I, I don't really like that. I'd rather have, like, the woman make the choice as opposed to, like, this sort of thing. But it's all very personal. This book looks beautiful and I I do want to read it but I do also want to acknowledge that there are some problematic themes. These are my opinions, this is, I, I'm speaking as someone who like I don't really enjoy the story of Hades and Persephone but this might, this might be a fun change. I don't know, I'm just not a big fan of a man changing the woman's world entirely and plucking her out of it but that's just me. This artwork looks amazing. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with it. Okay, let's head back. Let's see what else is available. Ooh, Our Violent Ends. This is something that I'm hoping I get for Christmas. Uh, I have asked for it, it is on my list. But Our Violent Ends is um, the second in the duology for These Violent Delights. And this is this book is by Chloe Gong. I loved the first book in the series. The first book is based on Romeo and Juliet. It's set in 1920s Shanghai and I, it's just amazing. One of, the, one of the things I love about it is it incorporates pinyin into the actual text. So I speak Mandarin. Like the stuff that goes on is great because I'm like I'm laughing along at the things that are said. One of my favourite childhood insults is actually in the first book. I sent it to my sisters and we all had a great laugh about it. It was just like it was just perfect. It was something we used to call each other all the time because 
we when we were children we we went to primary school in Taiwan and it was just an insult that everyone used when you're in year one and year two so uh, there's that this is the sequel and I am honestly so excited for this um so this this takes place after the first book and the first book is sort of a cross between like fantasy and contemporary or historical fiction I guess and I I just really really enjoyed it um, this will continue on where we left off in the first book so if you haven't read the first book you probably shouldn't pick this one up but it's it's so much fun and yeah I'm excited hopefully I get it for Christmas and if I don't then I don't okay so that's that for fantasy let's have a look at another area of my like my favorite romance because why not our best romance books okay let's have a scroll through here i am not into colleen hoover so i am going to skip past that uh the seven husbands of evelyn hugo is great um i have read this i i have lent it to my cousin actually uh this follows evelyn hugo who is a um a, i guess a television actress in the 50s i think is when it starts off and it just follows her life from the 50s onwards um it's about her relationship with her seven husbands and the things that go on in her everyday life this book is actually basically an interview that um, one character does with Evelyn Hugo. So she meets Evelyn Hugo and Evelyn talks about her life and her seven husbands. It's great, I really enjoyed it. Um, and I think lots of people would too. It is quite hard hitting, I cried, uh, but lots of people love it, I'm one of them. And I think if you're looking for a new romance, I think this is a good one to go with. I have read Taylor Jenkins reads other books, uh, Daisy Jones and the Six and Malibu Rising, but my favourite is definitely The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, of the lot. Oh, more Colleen Hoover. Uh, Sally Rooney. Ooh, The Wolf Den. The Wolf Den, I have not read, but I have seen in my local bookshop, and I'm interested to see what this is actually about. The Wolf Den is set in Pompeii in one of the brothels, okay. And it's hist it's a historical novel that follows Amara and her fellow she and her fellow she wolves. Okay, this is interesting. So Amara was once a beloved daughter of um beloved daughter until her father's death plunged her family into poverty. Okay, now she's a slave in an infamous brothel owned by a man she despises. There's a surprise. Sharp, clever, and resourceful, Amara is focused is focused to hide her talents. But Amara's spirit is far from broken. Oh, that's good. Uh, by day, she walks the streets with the wolf den, with the wolf den's other women, other women finding comfort in laughter and dreams they share. The streets of Pompeii are alive at the opportunity. Out here, even the lowest slave can secure a reversal in fortune. Amara has learnt that everything in the city has its price, but how much is her freedom going to cost her? So this is interesting. Uh, this is the first, according to, let me have a look, according to the synopsis, this is the first book in a trilogy and it's about women in Pompeii and it's perfect for people who've read uh, Science of the Girls, which I have on my shelf actually, it's back here if you, well you can't see it. It's great for fans of that and Circe, which I have read and I enjoyed, um, I do like Madeline Miller's books so I'm going to stick that on my radar, on my list. Let's move on. Let's see what else we have. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, The Hating Game. Let's talk about that. This book is fun. Uh, if you don't know uh, The Hating Game, uh, this is a book, well, this is a hate to love book. Surprise. <laughs> so it's about Lucy and Joshua and they sit across hearing each other every day in this office that is, that is shared by uh, two people who work at a book company so it's like they've got they were originally two separate companies but uh, they merged uh, in order to save the business so now they are both assistants to the uh, co-ceos i guess is what you should say but they hate each other they actively hate each other lucy doesn't understand joshua's t joyless uptight approach to his job and why he refuses to smile 
which is fair and Joshua is clearly baffled by Lucy's overly bright clothes quirkiness and desire to be liked I mean now they're vying for the same promotion and and Lucy decides to take him down it's so fun it's the I read this book last year I really enjoyed it I think I'm actually going to pick this up again and it's just a lot of fun I think Sally Thorne wrote this very well this is being adapted into a movie and I think the trailer actually just came out it stars Lucy Hale as Lucy and I'm not sure who they star as Joshua but it's very exciting and it's a fun book so if you're looking for another I guess adult romance I'd go for that one that sounds it sounds fun well it is fun uh let's keep going let's see what else do we have uh hmm oh last night at the telegraph club this is supposed to be a good book ah you can see the little pride thing so this book features an lgbtq plus romance i'm assuming well i i, I know because i've seen this book this book is about uh let's see 17 year old Lu lily who lily who um can't remember exactly where when the question took root but the answer it was in full bloom the moment she and Kath Kathleen Miller walked underneath a flashing neon sign of a lesbian bar called the Telegraph Club so this takes place in the 1950s so this takes place in 1954 um, and it's not safe for two girls to fall in love in general it wasn't safe for two girls to fall in love but they it especially in Drynatown, apparently. Uh, red scale paranoia threatens everyone, including Chinese Americans like Lily. With deportation looming over her father, despite his hard won citizenship, Lily and Kath risk everything to let their love see the light of day. I do like the fact that it takes place in Chinatown. I also, well, it's also nice to read, I guess, historical fiction that isn't like straight historical fiction. I mean, like, uh, that isn't like heterosexual passing historical fiction that's what I should say this seems fun I would like to pick this up actually I don't have many sapphic books on my shelves and I think one of the things that one of the things I want to do next year particularly is increase my like LGBT representation on my shelves anyway I'm looking forward to reading this this seems interesting okay we're on book depository now Okay, this is just similar stuff that we've seen. Song of Achilles is good, but I've talked about that. I have Dune. Oh, this is beautiful. This is a book I, well, this is an edition I really want, but I cannot justify me getting it. It's the 10th year anniversary edition of the Song of Achilles. And I, let's just grab it. I have my other one here with this cover that I absolutely love um this this cover is just the most beautiful one I own it is annotated to death like these are all my tags for each section and I absolutely loved it so I would have loved to get this one but well I would have loved to get this but I cannot justify I cannot justify getting it I'm not I don't need multiple editions of books let's just say that I do not need any more multiple editions of books uh, that is the truth. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> See what else. What is fantasy? Okay, scrolling through. Ooh, Six Crimson Cranes. This is an interesting book that I wanted to pick up. Uh, so this is about a princess who is exiled uh, and six cranes who are enchanted and an unspeakable curse. Okay. So this is inspired from the Six Swans fairy tale from the Brothers Grimm, and it's set in East Asia. This is about uh, Shi Shiori Amma, um, Anma, uh, the only princess of Kyata, um, has a secret. Forbidden magic runs through her veins. On the morning of her betrothal ceremony, um, Shiori loses control. Um, at first, her mistake seems like a stroke of luck forestalling the wedding she never wanted but it also catches the attention of Rakama her stepmother a sorceress in her own right Rakama banishes the young princess turning her turning her brothers into cranes warning Shinori that 
she must speak of it to no one, for with every word that escapes her lips, one of her brothers die. Penniless, voiceless and alone, Shinori searches for her brothers and uncovers a dark conspiracy to seize the throne. Only Shinori uh, can set the kingdom, kingdom to rights, but to do so she must place her trust in a paper bird, mercurial dragon, and the very boy she fought so hard not to marry. And she must embrace the magic she's been taught all her life to contain, no matter what the costs. This book is just like, can we just appreciate this cover? Let me, can I zoom in? No. This cover is beautiful. Like, oh, it's just so pretty. And this story just seems really interesting. I am going to ask my bookshop and actually see if they can order that in because I am interested in this. Let's keep scrolling through more fantasy. Mm. Mm. Romance. Oh, more Colleen Hoover. There's a surprise. Why oh, six of crows here? I'm really. Oh, the Night Circus. I've been wanting to read this for a while. This is by Erin Morgenstern, and it's about a circus that appears at night and disappears the next day. Um, it arrives without warning. No announcements precede it, and it's. It was simply there when yesterday it was not. A black sign painted in white letters hangs above upon the gates it reads it reads open at nightfall closes at dawn um as the sun disappears beyond the horizon all all over the tents small lights begin to flicker as though the entirety of the circus is covered in particularly bright fireflies when the tents are all aglow sparkling against the night sky the sign appears les cirques de lives the circus of dreams let's hope i said that correctly and now the circus is open and you may enter. This has, like, I have wanted to read this for ages and it's one of the books that I really, really want to read. I tried to read uh, Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern at the beginning of last year. Uh, I didn't really enjoy it that much, but this book is supposed to be brilliant and I really, really want to pick it up. So there we go. That's another thing that's on the list. So there's that. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to stop there because if I see any more, I'm just gonna write an endless Christmas list, which I shouldn't do. That was a giant trip. I now have more books that I want to get that I shouldn't. Uh, that just gives you, I guess it gives you an idea of the stuff that I really want to read, um, mainly in the fantasy and romance sort of genres, because that's usually what I gravitate towards. So there you go. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a fun thing to film and yeah, it's just, it's different. <laughs> it is different and I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe because I, I have lots of bookish content. Uh, feel free to like, feel free to leave a comment as to like, if you saw a book you want to pick up or if you have like a few books on your Christmas list, feel free to put them down below. I'm really interested to see what other people are looking forward to picking up. And um, let me know what, like, what releases you're excited for for the new year, because I think that's going to be a fun time. Anyway, uh, if you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe if you want more bookish content. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful day or night, depending on when you're watching this. And I will see you in, I guess, two days. Bye.